Hello, Intro Java students. Um, I want to take some of the toys that we made last time using p-vectors and start to think about how to turn them into more interesting games. So last time, our experiment number four was the following program. When you click, it creates a new ball object right at the lower left-hand corner of the screen, and it creates a new force vector that points toward wherever the mouse is. And I've set all my magnitudes to eight, and then it gives that ball the initial force, and we have gravity, and the balls just fly, and we see what happens. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to modify this so that enemies slowly generate and come at us from the right-hand side of the screen, and I'd like to see how can we see if the cannonballs are hitting the enemy objects so that that way we can have them destroy each other. So let's start this way. Um, I've just renamed mine to Castle Defense. Um, everything else is the same. So we've got an array list of ball objects, which we're creating and set up. Inside draw, I loop over the whole list. I get a ball object out of location i. Here I create a new gravity p vector, um, which is uh, a vector that's just pulling us down. And I add that force into the ball object. I draw an ellipse where the ball object is located, and I have it move. All right, here in mouse released, um, this is where I create a new vector that's pointing towards our, ma our mouse location. And I set the magnitude to 8, and I'm creating a new ball object that's located at the lower left-hand corner of the screen. And I add the, f the initial velocity in, and then we put the ball in the list so that that way um, it will be drawn in the draw loop up here. All right, so let's start this way. Um, I'm going to rename list to uh, cannonball list. So uh, I'll click on list and hit Alt Shift R. This only works inside Eclipse. Um, and I'll type cannonball list and then hit enter. And now we're just about to add a whole lot of stuff to draw and it's gonna get a little bit complicated. So let's do this. I wanna just select everything that's inside this loop that adds gravity and moves the ball objects and so forth and I'm gonna hit Control X to cut it and I'm going to create a new method called cannonballActions. All right, well, we don't have this method yet, but let's create it. So here I am, below draw, public void, cannonballActions. And I'll paste all the code into there. And what's nice about this is I can collapse this if I want to. And now draw is really, really simple. I'm just going to paint the background, and then I'm going to do all the cannonball actions. All right. Um, Let's create, uh, let's create enemies that spawn. So I want a whole bunch of enemies. So that means I'll need an array list. I'm going to use ball objects to represent the enemies because really enemies have all the same behaviors that the cannonballs have. Um, I want to be able to add forces to them and have them move. Um, and it's just going to be very easy to have them detect collisions between each other. If you wanted to, you could create a completely separate class to represent enemies if they had really different behaviors, if you wanted to have different commands. But for the moment, I think cannonballs will be the same type of thing as enemies. I just want to store them in different lists. So I'll call this one enemies list. And just like I had to create the cannonball list and set up, I'll create the enemies list. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> Except I don't want to create enemies when the mouse gets clicked. Um, it's sort of up to me how I want to create the enemies. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a timer, and the enemies are just going to get created on a regular time schedule. So up here I'll have an int called timer that's set to zero. And I'm going to create a, a method called enemy spawn. public void enemy spawn. And this is where I'm going to check the time and create an enemy if I need to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add one to the time. Did I call it timer? Yeah. Let's call it time. That's better. OK. So I'm going to add one to time. And then I'll say if time is larger than, I don't know, 100 maybe, then let's create a new enemy. Um, remember, the enemy is actually a ball object, so I'll say ball E equals new ball. All right, so now I've got to figure out where do I want to create it. Um, 
I want enemies to get created off the right hand side of the screen. So I'm going to create my enemy maybe at 650 uh, for the X coordinate and 580 for the Y coordinate. And I'll create it with an initial speed of 0 and we'll create them with a diameter of 25. Um, I'm going to create a color for my enemies, which is red. So all red, no green, no blue. Um, and I'll want to add the enemy to my enemies list. Do I not? Oh, I called it enemies list. Okay. Enemies list dot add. Great. Um, am I missing anything? Yeah, they're not going to move here. So I created them with an initial speed of zero. So let's create a new p vector for their velocity. Or I guess actually we could just set their speed directly. So let's say e dot x speed. Let's see, if I want them to be going to the left, I know I need a negative x speed. Maybe we'll give them a negative x speed of 0 0.5. And I got to make it a float. All right. So let's double check. We increase time. We said if time is bigger than 100, we'll create a new enemy ball. We'll make it colored red. We'll set its speed so that it's headed to the left. And we'll put it into our enemies list. Um, I guess the last thing we need to do is reset time. So I'll set time back to zero. So that way, the next time enemy spawn happens, we'll be counting up again from zero. All right, so far, so good. If you run it, though, you're going to be disappointed. Um, because even though we're creating enemies and we're putting them into the enemies list, we're not actually displaying any of the enemies yet. So let's make a method called, here I am back inside draw. I'm going to make one called display enemies. You know what, you can hover over it and you can actually say create method display enemies if you want to, and it'll just create it right here. So this method should essentially do the exact same thing as cannonball actions, except without all of the business of adding in gravity. Um, I guess that's the only thing we don't want. So I'm going to let you create this portion, but essentially it's, you're just going to loop over your enemy list, you're going to get out an enemy, you're going to draw an ellipse right where the enemy is, um, you're going to have the enemies move themselves, and I think that's it. Okay, good luck. Tune back in next time to see how can we make collisions happen between the cannonballs and the enemies.